Hey everybody, thank you all for joining us here today for another Function Fridays. I am very thankful that you guys decided to take a part of your day to be here with us today. And I am sure that you guys will not be disappointed because we will deliver everything that you require to be a better automation engineer. If you are new and you don't know what Function Fridays is about, it is a concept we decided to create where every single Friday we take our years of experience, we provide you with a very useful function that you can use for the rest of your automation careers. Basically, we are saving you many hours of development and we are saving you a lot of pain and learning curve that you would need if you were just starting out. Even if you're not starting out, we are providing you some useful functions that you may decide to use in the future. So that's what it's all about. Just one more thing before we start. Don't forget that this Saturday on November 9th, we actually are hosting a free live webinar on QTP frameworks. You guys can check it out here at qtptutorial.net slash webinar. It is at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Cool. So let's go ahead and get started. Today's function that I have for you is called get random letters. It is a very simple function, but it is so useful. And I am very happy to show it to you guys. The reason for this function is that there are many instances where you need to generate random strings, whether it be to generate a random username, a random password, random address, so on and so forth. This can be so useful because you don't have to think about it. You just use the function and it will generate random data for you. And based on how many characters you pass to it, that's how many random characters it will generate. Okay, so let me go ahead and copy this function name and we're gonna go ahead and start working on it. Open up our favorite tool called QTP and I'm going to start designing it for you. So we are going to pass a parameter to it called number of letters. This will give us a string represented by this number. So if you pass five, you'll get a string of five characters. If you pass 100, you'll get a string of 100 characters, so on and so forth, okay? Next thing we need to do is do what's called randomize. And I misspelled it. There you go. One more thing. Always turn on option explicit. It mandates that you declare your variables and therefore you will not make silly errors. Now, what does randomize do? Randomize is a built-in QTP function that allows another function that we're going to use to get, generate a random value. If you have a question anytime, you guys notice that all of my keywords, QTP keywords are in red. You can click on it, click F1, opens up the very helpful Quick Test Professional menu. And here you can read about it and use it and so on and so forth. Okay, now let's create a very simple loop. And then maybe the most complicated part of this function. Okay, looks great. All right, so let me explain what I did here. We have a loop that will run from one up until however many letters you decide to specify. And this will return us a character every single time you loop through. So this 90 through 65, this signifies in ASCII the letter that we are using. Because we need to be able to create a random ASCII character, which we will then convert into a string. Okay. And this statement allows us to do that. I think it's best you just memorize it. Don't worry about the logic too much, but this is very common through every single language, programming language, to utilize this kind of 
notation to create a random character. And what really happens is we subtract from Z to A, multiplied by a random number, make sure that it starts back at 65. And based on that, this creates a range from Z to A. And this Z to A is turned into an integer so that we can actually do this math, right? Because you can't be subtracting letters. And then we turn it into a character. And that character signifies that it's a string and we can continue to concatenate it onto our function. I may be a little bit confusing for you guys right now, but let's run through it and you guys can see exactly what I am talking about. Oh, and of course I forgot to declare variables. Otherwise option explicit would have thrown me an error. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to create eight letters, okay? And we'll be able to see what happens. Let me do. Okay. Give me a second. I believe that I missed a parentheses here. Yeah, that looks right. Let me try again. Okay. Let's check out what's going on here. So if we step in, we get this randomized function. Now it's going to loop through from one until this one, which is we know it's eight. Okay. And now it's going to return a random character. Now you guys can check out, I put out some stuff here. And in fact, you can see, check it out. So these guys signified as a character. Look, 89 is Y. If I do 90, it should be Z. Do you see that? If I do 65, it's going to be A. So really, it's the alphabet just represented as numbers, just so you can do this kind of thing, guys. And CCHR 65 is an A. Okay, that's very simple. 66 will be a B, and so on and so forth. And it's just the alphabet represented as numbers. Okay? And you guys can see here, so this R and D returns a random number, which is below one. Then based on that, we have this kind of math, which will return a 17 plus 65 will get us to 87. And when we turn that into an integer, that will return us the letter H. Do you guys see that's the kind of thing we're doing? So if we go through this loop, and in fact, let me add this to the watch as well, which will be our return. Do you guys see that? We got the letter B in there. Next. Now we got the letter Z in there. And you know, check out all these numbers, guys, okay? Now we got the letter T. Another T. And do you guys see how it's adding? And we'll get our string of eight characters. Boom, there it is. Message box showing us our random string of eight characters. How awesome is that? Do you guys love it or what? Okay, well, I think that's about it. Today was very quick and easy. Just wanted not to take too much of your time and give you the most important stuff in an extremely efficient manner. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, even if they're bad, we don't care. We want to help you guys. Just let us know. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Give us a thumbs up. Anything you feel that will help you to learn better. And when you tell us what you like and don't like, that's when we know how to help you guys better. Okay? And don't forget about our webinar. And please go ahead and subscribe. If you enjoy our videos, you can get our code from Function Fridays every single Friday in your inbox if you go to our website and subscribe to our email list. I promise we won't spam you. Thanks. Have a good day. See you next time.